This week's Ion MPI, brought to you by DigiKey, is Infineon. Lady Ada, what is the new product of the week this week? Okay, I'm glad you asked. This week's uh, NPI, Ion MPI, is, it's a long one, the Infineon BGT60 LTR 11 AIP, right. which, yes, that's uh, my favorite. And this is a pretty amazing chip, um, and uh, we'll show it maybe on the microscope later. It's a all-in-one 60 gigahertz uh, radar module um, that's not only is it a full like radar module, but the antenna is built in as well. Very cool. Um, so this is a 60 gigahertz Doppler radar sensor. It's only about you know six and a half by three and a half millimeters um, wide. Got a BGA uh, pads on the bottom, and then the the cool like weird gold thing with squares with feet. Uh, those are the antennas on top. Um, it's configurable, uh, but it also has a very basic autonomous mode where it just tells you if motion was detected and um, the direction of the motion, whether it's coming towards or away from you. Um, but for more advanced usage, there's also an SPI interface and pretty much everything is integrated. Like you basically just need a crystal, a couple of passives, and you're ready to go. So um, Doppler, in case this is a, a nice image from Wikipedia, um, Doppler, in case you're not aware of how this works, is compared to um, infrared reflective sensors, right? Infrared reflective sensors like um, IR and time of flight, they send a wave of light and then they measure how much was reflected back. And so it's like a quantity. Time of flight, they measure the, the time it takes. Um, Doppler is a little bit different. It What it does is it can detect the motion because as something's moving, the, um, the high frequency waves that you bounce back, um, the frequency shifts just slightly called the Doppler effect. Um, you know, this is commonly when you're in, in high school or grade school, you know, when you're listening to a siren, as it, uh, you know, a fire truck goes by, um, the Doppler effect makes the frequency change as it passes you. And that's, you know, that motion. Wow, wow. Yeah, the wow, wow. So that, um, that effect of things in motion, the waves that are emitted or hitting them that bounce back, um, change in frequency slightly, that's the effect. And so you can measure the speed of something. Um, and, you know, it's often, again, Dopplers are used for, um, you know, radar detecting of uh, cars. So, you know, you have those radar detector guns that um, traffic police use. They bounce a radar off of you. They can tell how fast you are going without having to, like, count ticks or something. Um, yep. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and mailboxes. So, you know, we've talked before about using radar for detecting speed, um, but another useful thing that these radar Doppler sensors are used for is to detect uh, whether a human is there. Um, and usually you do human detection, not with time of flight sensors or with, or infrared, you'd use it for a hand, but usually you use a PIR sensor. And PIR sensors are great for um, locating and measuring whether something that emits infrared light, you know, heat is moving. So um, people, large animals, um, you know, you'll see these often in restrooms where, you know, when you open the restroom, it detects that there's a human there. Or sometimes uh, if you're in front of a door, it detects and it opens the door. Zoopy IR sensors are very common, very inexpensive, and they've been wrong, around for a long time. There's a couple downsides of PR. This is from uh, Infineon's uh, documentation, and uh, they did a really good job here. So PIRs, I will say, you know, they're going to be less expensive, but there's a couple things where radars sensors are better. Um, so first off, they have um, they can have wider range, 24 gigahertz especially. You can be a couple meters range or more. Um, and, you know, like with the car detection, you know, it can be a quarter of a mile. Um, one thing that's nice about radar compared to PIR is PIR only detects if there's movement. Whereas because you have that Doppler effect, you can tell whether something is leaving or entering the area, like it detects the motion forward or backwards. And so there are examples of an automatic door, right? You only want the door to open as people are entering and, you know, not exiting. Like it knows whether you're you, you've just passed the door or whether you're entering the door. Um, you know, this is like the science fiction movie thing where it's like, how does a door know when, like, which direction you move? Mm -hmm. Because they have radar sensors in the future, not PIR. Um, the most important thing is that you can put a radar sensor behind a material and it doesn't have to be, um, it can be opaque to light. 
right? Whereas PIR sensors, they have a lens and you can't have anything blocking the lens. Like it, it has to be exposed. And so you can see a PIR sensor because it's got this gray or white blobby, you know, lens thing. Um, whereas radar can put, be put behind a material like wood or plastic, it doesn't have to be visible. So it can have a, a glass, it can have a much nicer look. Um, so overall, you know, for a lot of things like sensitivity and resolution and direction and distance and different materials and size, they're also, uh, these sensors are much smaller than, uh, laser or, um, which is, you know, time of flight or, uh, ultrasonic sonar or infrared or PIR, but they're not as cheap, right? So they are less expensive and they're a little bit more complicated. Um, but this, uh, LTR, the BGT-60 is a great sensor to get started. Uh, so here's the uh, block diagram. It, again, it does kind of everything for you. Um, you wire it up, has an antenna built in. You just have to give it a crystal. Um, it can run on its own. It's got a you know, P detect and T detect at the top is the built in capabilities. Um, the mode select at the top, the QS one through four, you can tell it whether you want it to be in autonomous mode and how sensitive you want the autonomous mode to be, or there's an SPI mode as well. Compared to this, BGT24, this is the 24 gigahertz. Again, the 60 gigahertz, it's higher frequency. The antenna is much smaller. You can see the antenna on this shield. You know, it's a, it's a two inches by one inch. It's not, it's small, but it's not tiny. Um, the the BGT60 is, is much, much smaller. Um, one thing to note, uh, power supply, you will need to give it 1.5 volts. Um, that's the logic level as well, I think. And so uh, just be aware when you wire this up to your three volt microcontroller, you'll need to give it a regulator and level shifting. If you don't want to deal with uh, the BGA package, um, you can get it in uh, this cute BGT60 LTR uh, 11 IP shield. It's minimal, right? It's not that much bigger than the chip itself. And it has the crystal, um, I think has some uh, a regulator built in. It only has the four pins though, power ground, um, motion trigger and directional. So it only gives you like four bits, whether somebody's moving or not, and which direction they're moving in towards or away from the sensor. Um, but there's always a little dev board that you can plug it into, but that's like a, the most minimal solution. There's also this like fancy board. That's the thing I showed yesterday, the demo board, which has um, a main core on top of it as well. And I think, I think it's a Cypress chip. And then um, the Infineon um, radar shield at the bottom. There's also this really cute uh, all-in-one, it's called like a sensor to go board. Um, it has the SPI and uh, GPIO pins brought out and also the sensitivity um, and threshold timing, just like a PIR sensor is configurable with two uh, mini tripods. And you can see the sonar on the right. You can even sort of see the, uh, not sonar, the radar on the right. You can even see the antenna. Um, this is the pinout. Uh, if you want to integrate this, it does come on a pick and place reel. Um, you can build pro but uh, if you don't want to uh, do the layout, I did check out an ultra librarian, which is linked to from DigiKey, has the uh, pinout and, and uh, pad definition, so you can just download it directly to your CAD program. On uh, There's actually two places on GitHub. Um, so there's a radar, this is the shield that just has the GPIO pin. So this is a very simplified, um, library that only does like the GPIO. There's also a separate library file for SPI mode, if you're interested in. Um, the SPI mode, uh, you know, there's example code, you'll have to do the hardware abstraction layer, but um, you can set all the little tweaks and, and knobs you want to um, customize the GPIO. And of course, you can still have IRQ output if you want to be told, uh, you know, when the uh, sensor is triggered. But again, I think that, you know, it has this built in simple mode. You can start with that. And then if that doesn't work for you, upgrade to using SPI control. Available on DigiKey, there was like 4,000. There's 4,000. There's a lot. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do two things. They have a cool video. We're going to play that. And then we're going to bounce out of Ion API and we're going to show, because um, we're testing out microscope stuff. So we didn't want to have this as part of Ion API. So we're going to just do that really quick. So see you on the other side. Hi, I'm Arushi Jain. And as a radar system application engineer, I often get told that radar is too complex. We've been listening, so let's move away from complexity and go towards simplicity.
This is our BGT60 LTR11 shield. In the center here is the 60 LTR11 MMIC with the antennas integrated in the package already. This reduces complexity to design antennas at the user end. It's a really small package with an extremely low power consumption. It supports different modes of operation, including a completely autonomous mode without requiring any MCU or any signal processing. Now, isn't that simple? So let me show you how this works. All you need is a battery connection and connect the power supply here. You see, the LEDs start detecting me already. The green one is for motion detection, whereas the red one is for direction detection. As I move my hand towards and away, you see the red one starts blinking and stopping. When it is blinking, it means I'm coming towards it, and when it stops, that means I'm going away. The radar also works through different materials. As you see, I have it covered here with a plexiglass, and it still detects my hand movement. It's a Doppler-based motion radar sensor. It detects a human target up to 5 meter range and is also less than 5 milliwatt in power consumption. Hi, on the PR.